Uh, in the last video lecture, we had learned about uh, different uh, layouts of a distribution network or a distribution system. In this video lecture, we will be learning about the methods of distribution. Now, uh, in the last lecture, we had also seen what are the requirements of a good distribution system. One of the requirements of a good distribution system was that it should develop a sufficient pressure head wherever it is supplying the water. So, to ensure this uh, particular clause, we, we have different types of methods of distribution. So, depending upon the level of the source of water and that of the city, topography of the area and other local conditions and considerations, the water may be forced into the distribution system in the following three ways. First is by gravitation system, second is by pumping system and third is by combined gravity and pumping system. So in today's lecture we will be covering these three methods starting with the gravitation system. Uh, it is very simple method. In this system the water from the high level source is distributed to the consumers at low level by mere action of gravity without any pumping ensuring head is achieved at consumers after all losses. So in this case what happens is the city is located at the foothills uh, or the city is located at the foot of the hill. Uh, the, there is a hill, okay, some, some kind of hill. Your water distribution has to be above and your city has to be located below so that this water can be conveyed to the city just by the action of gravity. It's, it's that simple. Now for this purpose, uh, your uh, treatment plant that should also be located above the city because from treatment plant it is stored into some distribution reservoir uh, or basically that distribution reservoir should be above the city and from there it should it, it comes basically through gravitational force uh, because of the gravity now what here uh, they have shown is that since uh, we are uh, letting the water to flow uh, due to gravity and uh, it is flowing through pipes we have learned in hydraulics that when the water flows through pipe there is head loss definitely there is head loss if the head loss is not considered then the head that is generated because of that flow that head would be called a static head that is without any head loss but when it reaches to the consumer what happens is that there is a considerable amount of head loss and in maximum demand maximum demand means uh, the demand ma first of all what is demand demand is nothing but how much water requirement is there to the city so consider a case of a fire outbreak so in fire fire outbreaks you need much more water than as usual right so at that time that would be a maximum demand and what is minimum demand minimum demand is let's say during the night time when you are sleeping during uh, when you are sleeping or oh, most of the people are not using the water right very barely few people are using the water so at that time the demand of the water is very less in the city so that time the head loss will also be less because less amount of water is being supplied but during maximum demand since more amount of water is being supplied the discharge is more therefore the head loss will also be greater and for minimum demand the head loss will be lesser and after subtracting the head loss this is the net head that you get net head means basically it uh, directly converts into or it directly translates to pressure the requirement that we just talked about previously so it, it is directly proportional to the head that you are receiving here pressure right this method is the most economical and reliable since no pumping is involved at any stage since no pumping is involved it is the most uh, reliable one why because let us say during a fire outbreak uh, the worst thing to happen during a fire outbreak if you are depending on pump that your pump fails that is the worst thing that can happen right so if your pump fails then how are you going to supply the water correct at that point this gravitational system proves to be better because it it is dependent on no pumps it is dependent on gravity and gravity is always present as a field it needs a lake or reservoir situated at high level and the city should be situated at foot of the hill 
In gravitation system, the pumping is normally not required at any stage. However, in case where the source such as a lake is situated at hill and the treatment plant is also situated almost at the same level on the hill itself, then the water may have to be conveyed from the source to the treatment plant by low lift pumping. So let's say if there is a hill and uh, your city is here and uh, there is a, a source of lake or source of water basically, source of water is there and your treatment plant is also here ok so from this point to this point you will have to use some, some kind of pumping just to transmit from source to that uh, that treatment plant basically and from treatment plant obviously it can be collected into a reservoir I will show you what a distribution reservoir is at the end of this uh, uh, by the end of this video you will be seeing what a distribution reservoir is and obviously I believe everyone has seen it just by the name uh, you might not be getting it the gravitation system is designed so as to leave only the minimum permitted available head to the consumers and the rest is consumed in friction and other losses so this gravitation system is such that only the minimum required head what is required for a consumer only that much would be available uh, it, it would not be that you will receive a very high pressure head and something like that for that you will need this to be at a much higher level so that the gravity force is more that won't happen here motor pumps are used only in case of fire outbreaks to develop sufficient pressure during fire so if your gravitational system is not able to develop this sufficient pressure head during fire because during fire we need some uh, we need more pressure head because the water has to gush out through a higher discharge and through a higher pressure then at that time you may have to take some help of some some of the motor pumps just to, in case to pump water pump out the water okay the next is pumping system in the pumping system the treated water is directly pumped into the distribution mains without storing it anywhere so in this what happens you take uh, let's say this is a source source from which you are taking the water this is the pump house uh, after treatment directly that water is pumped to the public it is not stored anywhere that is why this system is also called as pumping without storage system and same way uh, this is the static head that is developed that is uh, if if there was in no loss no head loss then this would be the uh, head that this pump would generate but because there is head loss for minimum demand this much is the head loss for maximum demand this much is the head loss and after subtracting the head losses this is the net head available high lift pumps are required in this system which have to operate at variable speeds so as to meet the variable demand of water for which continuous supervision is required what is this variable demand as I told you that uh, in, my, in my previous uh, point I told you during night time when everyone is sleeping the demand of water is very less whereas when you wake up in the morning the time from 6 am to 9 am during that time the water requirement is much much higher so the, the demand is not same throughout the day it varies at every hour from 6 to 9 it is going to vary, from 9 to 12 it is going to vary, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, all the hours it is going to vary. So to, uh, and varying demand means during 6 to 9 the demand will be very very high. During uh, let's say in the afternoon hours 2 to 4 pm the demand will not be that, that high right. It will be a little bit but it won't be that much high. So you won't be requiring more water and since your pumping is the only thing that uh, you are relying to, to supply you the water the pump will also have to adjust according to the variable demand thus the pump will have to be operated at variable speeds if the power supply fails there will be complete stoppage of water this is one of the major disadvantages of pumping system that if power supply fails and in the worst case scenario if there is a fire outbreak also at the same time then it is it is a disaster right 
because you would not want your pump to be failing during a fire outbreak also if uh, also not only the pump failing but if the pump requires electricity to run so if there is a short outage of power then what would happen right so not necessarily the pump fails but there can be outage of power as well in that case you need some backup a generator right and extra pumps if one pump fails then there will be an extra pump so that these provisions have to be provided however the only advantage of this method is that during fires since in the fire when there is a fire outbreak you need large volume of water and it has to be the discharge has to be high and the pressure has to be high so this can be achieved using pumps that is the only advantage and again <laughs> the disadvantage also is during the fires only so that has to be uh, taken into consideration the last one is combined gravity and pumping system and this is the uh, distribution reservoir which i was talking about this 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 is nothing but a storage tank so the water for the entire area uh, for which it is going to supply that water is going to be stored in this tank uh, this uh, distribution reservoir and from here it is going to be distributed to all the places so this is the thing in this system the treated water is pumped at a constant rate and stored into an elevated distribution reservoir i will use a different pen here yeah yeah so it is uh, stored into this distribution reservoir sometimes the entire water is first of all pumped into this distribution reservoir and many a times it is pumped into distribution mains and reservoirs simultaneously so this distrib water distribution mains it means the pipes which are going to carry the water to to people so sometimes in this method what happens that the you pump the water in in the distribution reservoir as well as you pump it in the mains and after you pump it in this distribution reservoir after that it is going to uh, go to the public by gravity so in this system you are using both you are using gravity also you are using pumping system and this is one of the most used uh, most widely used but generally if there is a city which is located at foothills obviously the best one would be the gravity system this method does combines pumping as well as gravity flow and is sometimes called pumping with storage system the excess water during low demand periods gets stored in the reservoir and gets supplied during high demand periods so when the demand is low during the night time when the demand is low or during any any period of the day at that time what happens the the pump is operated at a same uh, same uh, constant speed and same discharge so that pump will store the water when the demand is low and the same stored water can then be used when the demand is very high so your pump can operate at constant speeds there it does not have to vary and it does not have to change its speed as it used to happen in the pumping system now why it it happened only when it was only pumping system why it had to change the speed because there was no storage but since we are getting a storage here we can store the water when the demand is low and that stored water can then be used when the demand is high so your pump has to operate at only a constant speed so that's what the next point says the pumps are worked at constant rate which is adjusted in such a way that excess quantity of water is stored in the reservoir during low consumption uh, nearly equals to the extra demand during high consumption this we will learn in more detail in the next video lecture this system helps in operating the pump at constant speed at the rated capacities thus increasing their efficiency and reducing their wear and tear so obviously if you are not uh, using your pump at different speeds and if you are using only at constant speed then it will uh, reduce the wear and tear on the pump also so this was it for today's lecture in the next video lecture we will be learning about distribution reservoir how much storage capacity should it have Till then, see you in the next lecture. Take care.